Come on, cough for me. Cough it up. Give us a cough now. Cough. And cough. Have a nice day. Kill me! Put me out of my misery! Just kill me, please! Hello everyone, I'm TG, and this is your home for Garbage Gameplay. July 10th has come and gone, and we have been graced by the Capcom gods with all kinds of new goodies. Today I'm going to show you a brand new build for Nikolai using some of the cool stuff that we got from this patch. I think it's high time that we scrape Nikolai up from the bottom of the barrel and show the world that he is far more than just a Russian doll. Now this build is a hybrid of both firearms and infection, but we want to keep Nemesis in our back pocket for whenever those survivors are just getting a little too bold. Now far gone are the days of Nikolai just setting up turrets and walking away. Oh, we all remember losing 10 games in a row. It's a little more complicated than that now, and frankly, turrets kind of suck. So we're going to steer clear of anything like that, and we are going to focus on more of a hands-on approach to Nikolai. So as glorious as his new extermination is, we're going to stick with Relentless for Nemesis, because that's going to pair with the tracking rounds to make sure we get Nemesis out as much as possible. Tracking rounds make it so survivors become trackable every time they're hit with a firearm. Now the crown jewel of this entire build is Bioterrorism. This makes it so all this dirty Sutka's firearms become infectious. Getting into the shitty gritty of what that means is your standard rifle will take three shots or two headshots to cause infection, your high caliber rifle will take only two shots to cause infection, the machine gun will take 11 shots to cause infection, or seven to nine if you have headshots, good luck with that, and the mighty weapon of war, the AP Gator, will only take one shot to cause infection, so make that bad boy count. So you may be asking yourself, does this apply to turrets? And yes, it absolutely does. All the turrets in the game can be affected by bioterrorism. But I want to stay as far away from turrets as possible because these days survivors are just too smart and all turrets do is end up costing you 20 seconds. For his first card, I use Radar Pulse. That's just going to make it so I can track the survivors as much as possible and get my boy Nemesis out. And for his second exclusive card, I'm using the new AP Gator, which in my opinion is one of the best new cards that Capcom has given us. Now it costs 6 and you only get one shot, but this baby makes their heads explode like that scene in fucking Scanners. It does roughly 750 damage with a body shot, and I've seen it do up to 900 with a headshot. So if you hit with this filthy slut, not only are they going to be infected, but they're going to be limping around like a sick dog. Now onto equipment. This is something I never thought I'd see, but I am going to be using Viral Canisters 3 and 2, and this is going to make it so my bullets cause the infection at the values that I said earlier. I am also going to be using the miniature reactor because a few patches ago they did nerf how much bio energy you regain whenever you're controlling a gun and guns ain't cheap these days folks. So you're definitely going to need that for your economy. And lastly I am using the modified gear 3 and that is just because we're not using any camera recovery equipment in this build. So this is going to make it so you can jump in and out of your guns as fast as possible and try not to give the survivors that 20 second boost. So you'll notice this build is not using any damage equipment for firearms. And the reason for that is, though a fully boosted AP Gator would just be magical, a lot of the damage we're doing comes from the infection we cause. So gearing for damage ends up being just a little bit redundant. Now onto our deck, we're using two mods. Efficiency mod firearms of course, but also we're going to be using generator mod small. Because like I said earlier, we need all the economy we can get, we're going to be jumping from camera to camera, and it ends up just being really taxing on our bioenergy. The rest of our deck consists of every gun in the game, excluding enhancers of course, and I've even thrown in a rifle turret, just because sometimes it can really get you out of the pinch and be a little bit of a trump card. Next we're using a tracker mine, just so we can keep the tracking up as much as possible on the survivors to help us with Nemesis. And of course our very very good friend Zombie Infectious, simply for infection purposes. You could go ahead and throw in a triple leg hole trap if you really want to piss people off, but the presets that I'm using have traps littered all about, so I'd rather go all guns. Now the only real counter you're going to see to this is if the survivors are gearing for speed. And speed is apparently the name of the game since July 10th. So if you find yourself coming up against a lot of teams that have speed, 
what you want to do is go ahead and switch out your modified gear 3 for reinforced bearing. That way you have better control over your guns. But keep in mind, if you do that, you're going to be a lot slower to the draw and you're not going to be able to disengage your guns as fast as you'd like to, which may end up costing you 20 seconds when you'd really rather not. So that's the build. If you can get a match these days between people abusing the Power Limiter mod, go ahead and try it out yourself. Let me know what you think down below. And as always, I'm TG. If you like what you saw, you know what to do. If not, eh, keep it sleazy.